Welcome back to Tip Tip Tuesday. This is our third installment on suspension geometry and how suspensions work. I'm the CEO of Carbon, Steve Dynan. I'm Jeff Westfall, product strategist and lead racing driver. So today we're gonna to talk about scrub radius. And what scrub radius basically is, is you have a suspension on your car, upper and lower wishbone, and outside there's a ball joint that allows the tire to steer or to adjust the alignment in the back on tow. If you draw a straight line from the upper ball joint to the lower ball joint, where that hits the ground, and then you measure where the center of the tire is, the distance between those two is called scrub. Now, the reason we have scrub is if you have a distance between the tire and the suspension imaginary contact points and where they hit the ground, when you hit a rut or a change in road surface or anything, that leverage causes the tire to pull in your hands and move the steering wheel and it gives you a feeling of of what's going on the road. It gives you a tactile sensation of what's going on the road. The sensation that you feel the ground through the steering wheel. Correct. Yep. If it was right on top of each other, this is what they do with front wheel drive cars. They put the two uh, imaginary pickup points where they hit the ground in the center of the tire. So when you step on the gas, it doesn't torque steer because you have no leverage. Because front wheel drive cars are driven forward by the front wheels, which are also doing the steering. So you have 100% of the car's movement happening on two tires, not four. Right. Now in a race car, we usually move the wheel out and we increase the scrub because we want more feeling yep. in the car. It's more tactile sensation for the race car driver. 100%. Yeah. But also accidentally happens when you put wide wheels and tires on your car. The wider you go, the more scrub radius you generally have. Yes. Particularly if you put spacers on, which I know people like spacers because of the way they look, but they actually make the car very hard to drive. Yep, especially over bumps, change in surfaces. Yes. Yep. Tram lining is a, a trend that you'll feel, uh, a term that we use where the tire is picking up something in the surface and pulling you one way and pulling you the other way gently. So if this is the imaginary pickup points of the suspension and this is your tire. Suspension here. Yes, this is the leverage and that's what pulls the steering wheel in your hand. Yep. So if we add a wider wheel and tire, this distance gets bigger and we get more feel, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, if we get too much, the car darts around and is very uncontrollable, especially if you leave all the rubber in the suspension system because the rubber has play. Yep. And then you get wind up with toe changes in the back from the rubber flexing and you wind up with caster changes in the front from the strut rod changing and then the car will dart all over the road under braking or turning to make the car very hard to drive. And what Steve means by rubber is the bushings, right? Every arm or piece of your suspension has a bushing that is encapsulated there to help it be quiet and noise free or as close to noise free as possible. But that rubber squishes and moves and deflects. So the harder you drive your car, the more it moves and you get dynamic changes that you don't want. Right. So in our next video, we're going to talk about how to help make the car stable. Once you put large wheels and tires on, increase your scrub radius. Make sure you um, like and subscribe to our Tech Tip Tuesday so you don't miss any. And check out any new products that you'd like to learn about and all the features of these videos here in our suspension sequence at carbon.com.